Hi, I'm Jillian from the Center for Academic Communication. Today we'll look at the kinds of verbs that are used in academic writing and how verbs are used to introduce research. Strictly speaking, tense refers only to the location of an action in time, the present or past and possibly the future. Then there are another set of conditions that allow us to be more descriptive about how actions happen. Aspect refers to how time passes or how events occur within a time frame, such as in the perfect or progressive forms. Mood indicates the intent of the writer to give a command, state a fact, ask a question, or pose a hypothetical situation. Voice is the relationship between a verb's agent and the receiver of the action, such as in the active and passive forms. The simple present is the most commonly used in academic writing. It's used to frame a piece of writing. We use it in the introduction to say what is already known about the topic, and in the conclusion to say what we now know about the topic and what further research may still be required. The present tense is preferred in MLA and some other styles to show the opinions and claims of other writers that are still believed to be valid and to show your support or lack of support for the position of other writers. The convention in academic writing in the humanities disciplines is to address the events in books, poems, movies, plays, and songs in the present tense. The simple past is also common in academic writing and is used to discuss completed processes that occurred at a specific time in the past. In most academic fields, the past tense is used to introduce the content, findings, and conclusions of past research, where the emphasis is on the validity of the claim at the time the research was conducted. APA style also prefers this tense for introducing research. In writing about literature and other topics, the past tense may also be used to draw parallels between the present tense of characters' actions and the actions or beliefs of real people at the time a book was written. Contrary to what you might have been told, it is possible and sometimes necessary to switch between tenses in a single sentence. A common error is to use the simple past when you meant to use the present tense but the passive voice, since all the regular verbs have the same past tense and past participle forms. Make sure it's clear who or what is performing the action of your verb, and that the be verb is there if you're using the passive voice. The simplest way to express future time in English is to use will plus the base form of a verb. In academic writing, it is usually only used to indicate what will happen in the rest of a piece of writing. The perfect tenses are also used to describe events that have been completed at some point before now, but that aren't anchored to a specific time. It's formed by using a present or past form of the verb have and a past participle. Remember that regular verbs have past participles that are the same as the past tense, whereas irregular verbs have different forms. The present perfect tense is used to refer to research findings that are continuing, currently relevant, or still held to be true. The past perfect tense can be used to refer to research findings that were true or relevant up until a certain point in the past. Other verb forms, such as the progressive or continuous forms, are rarely used in academic writing. If you're not sure, stick with that present tense since it's the most common and the most clear. Don't forget that verbs need to agree in number with their subjects. Singular subjects get singular verbs, and plural subjects get plural verbs. If English isn't your first language, this probably seems weird to you, and you'll need to pay close attention to editing for agreement in your writing. Okay, that concludes our session on academic verb use. I hope you've learned a few things about the main verb tenses used in academic research and writing. Thanks for watching. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, visit the University of Victoria Centre for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck, and see you soon!